In this video, I'll break down the key psychiatric scales, which includes the scoring ranges for slums, MMSE, HAMD, THQ9, Beck, GAD, COWS, and SIWA. I'll give you mnemonics and memory tricks for fast recall, and even include practice questions to test your knowledge. Before I get started, remember mild symptoms may require medication only as a needed basis, not standing order. Moderate levels would require standing treatment, and severe treatments would require medication and therapy would be a plus. Let's get started. The slums and MMSE are used to assess cognitive function, in other words, mental status. Here's how their scoring breaks down. Slums is scored between zero and 30. The lower the score, dementia is likely. So zero to 20 equals dementia, 21 to 26 equals mild, 27 to 30 equals normal. Let's take a look at MMSE. It's scored from zero to 30 as well. Zero to nine equals severe, 10, 20 is moderate, 21 to 24 is mild, 25 to 30 normal. Remember the 20 is the line. If it's below 20, dementia is likely. Now for MMSE, remember severe scores are single digits. Depression severity is often measured using standardized scales to assess symptoms and guide treatment. Let's break down three commonly used tools. The Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, HAMD, Patient Health Questionnaire 9, PHQ-9, and the Beck Depression Inventory, BDI. These scales measure depression severity. Pay attention to the cutoffs. First up, the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, or HAMD. This clinician-administered tool scores from 0 to 76. Here's what the numbers mean. 0 to 7, considered normal, meaning minimal to no symptoms. 8 to 13, indicates mild depression. 14 to 18, falls under the moderate range. 19 and above, suggests severe depression, requiring further evaluation and possible intervention. Next, we have the PHQ-9, a self-reported questionnaire with a score range of 0 to 27. 0 to 4, normal, meaning little to no depressive symptoms. 5 to 9, mild symptoms, some distress, but not necessarily meeting criteria for major depression. 10 to 14, moderate depression. This is where clinical intervention may be beneficial. 15 to 19, moderately severe. Symptoms are more pronounced and may significantly impact daily life. 20 to 27, severe depression, often requiring immediate clinical attention. Finally, we have the Beck Depression Inventory, another self-report measure scoring from 0 to 63. 0 to 13, minimal depression, some sadness, but generally within normal limits. 14 to 19, mild depression, symptoms are noticeable but not debilitating. 20 to 28, moderate depression, functioning may be impaired and treatment is often recommended. 29 to 63, severe depression, this score range suggests significant distress and a strong need for professional support. Remember, PHQ-9 and Beck are similar. Moderate starts at 10 for PHQ-9 and moderate 20 for Beck. HAMD, on the other hand, is slightly different. Just remember, mild ends at 13, moderate starts at 14. Let's try a few practice questions. A patient's HAMD score decreases from 24 to 12 after six weeks of antidepressant treatment. How should the clinician interpret this change? A, the patient has fully recovered from depression. B, the patient has shown partial response to treatment. C, the patient requires immediate medication adjustment. D, the patient has worsened. The correct answer, B, the patient has shown partial response to treatment. A reduction in HAMD score by at least 50% is considered a partial response to treatment. A score of 12 indicates mild depression, meaning further treatment optimization may be needed. Next question. A patient presents with a PHQ-9 score of 21. Upon further evaluation, they exhibit psychotic features, including auditory hallucinations. What is the most appropriate next step? A. Start an SSRI and schedule a follow-up in two weeks. B. Refer to a therapist for cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. C. Initiate an antipsychotic in addition to an antidepressant. D. Reassure the patient 
that depression with psychotic features resolves on its own. Correct answer C. Initiate an antipsychotic in addition to an antidepressant. Severe depression, PHQ-9 score 20 to 27, with psychotic features requires a combination of an antidepressant and an antipsychotic. Monotherapy with an SSRI alone is inadequate. Let's try another practice question. A 28-year-old patient scores a 30 on the Beck Depression Inventory, BDI, but denies suicidal ideation. They report significant social withdrawal and impaired work performance. What is the next best step in management? A. Reassure the patient that their symptoms will resolve on their own. B. Start a low-dose SSRI and schedule a follow-up in one month. C. Recommend inpatient psychiatric hospitalization. D. Refer for intensive outpatient therapy or psychotherapy with medication. Correct answer, D, refer for intensive outpatient therapy or psychotherapy with medication. A BDI score of 29 to 63 is severe depression, requiring immediate intervention. If suicidal ideation is absent, inpatient hospitalization is not necessary, but aggressive outpatient management is needed. Let's take a look at assessment tools for anxiety, MA and GAD7. For HAM A, scores from 0 to 56, 0 to 13 equals normal, 14 to 17 mild, 18 to 24 is moderate, 25 and greater equals severe. Now GAD 7 is scored from 0 to 21, 0 to 4 is normal, 5 to 9 mild, 10 to 14 equals moderate, 15 to 21 is severe. Try to remember for GAD7, think 5, 10, 15 rule, mild, moderate, severe. Now let's take a look at substance use, cows, and Siwa. I'm going to attach a downloadable file for you to take a look at the assessment. You need to know what categories and scores that apply to it. The best way to learn these are by doing practice questions on them to familiarize how to score the patient with opioid withdrawal and alcohol withdrawal. So this way, you will have an understanding of the severity of it. The exam questions would focus on the symptoms and not tell you the score, so you need to be prepared to calculate the score. So let's take a look at cow's score is from 0 to 36 plus. 0 to 4 equals none. 5 to 12 mild can give PRN. 13 to 24 equals moderate, give standing medication. 25 to 35 equals moderately severe. 36 and plus, severe. COA score is from 0 to 21 plus. 0 to 9 equals normal. 10 to 15 equals mild. 16 to 20 equals moderate. 21 and plus is severe. Let me know if you would like additional practice questions specifically on something. I would be happy to create it. Let's do practice question. A patient undergoing opioid withdrawal is assessed using cows and receives a score of 26. Which of the following is the most appropriate intervention? A. Provide symptomatic treatment as needed, PRN. B. Initiate standing opioid withdrawal medication. C. Discharge the patient with instructions to return if symptoms worsen. D. Monitor the patient but withhold medication unless symptoms worsen. The correct answer is B, initiate standing opioid withdrawal medication. A 58-year-old male with a history of chronic alcohol use disorder presents to the emergency department 12 hours after his last drink. He complains of tremors, anxiety, and mild nausea. His vitals are stable and his CWA score is 13. What is the most appropriate next step? A, provide supportive care and PRN benzodiazepines. B. Start benzodiazepines on a standing schedule. C. Discharge home without patient follow-up. D. Initiate dexmedetomidine infusion. The correct answer is A. Provide supportive care and PRN benzodiazepines. Let's review key takeaways here. CWA. Moderate starts at 16, severe at 21. 
PHQ-9 and BEC, moderate starts at 10 for PHQ-9 and 20 for BEC. For GAD-7, remember 5-10-15 rule. For slums and MMSE, remember 20 is the line. If it's below 20, dementia is likely. For MMSE, remember severe scores are single digits. So what is exam day strategy? If you forget cutoffs, eliminate extreme options. See what calculation? Add up symptom scores carefully. Use mnemonics to retain numbers. Subscribe for more study hacks and exam prep. See you in the next video.